Yo, what is up, squad? I'm ready to break your neck with my world debut freestyle. Who's ready to hear me spit some bars? Nah, I ain't gonna do that. But what I will do is take a quick look at tomorrow's drops and then move over to some sneaker news. Let's go. We got one pair dropping tomorrow, which is pretty chill for a Saturday morning, and that's the Air Jordan Retro 4 Alternate Motorsport. The pairs will drop everywhere at 7 a.m. Pacific or 10 a.m. Eastern as a very large release, so you shouldn't have much problem picking them up. Pairs will run for $190 in men's sizing, $140 for grade school, $80 for preschool, and toddlers will cost $60. Good luck to everyone tomorrow morning. Over to Adidas, and first up, we have Kanye West in a pair of the Air Jordan 11 Low IE. No, wait, okay, okay. They just took a lot of inspiration from the model, but for real, what he has on feet are a pair that we looked at a while ago, the Adidas Yeezy Runner from Season 6. There's no word on when these will release, but it'll most likely be a 2018 drop. Another interesting note is that up until now, Kanye West has had his shoes designed from the ground up, but this pair seems to be based on the Adidas Kobe 83, which was later renamed to the Adidas EQT Responsive. Well, actually, I take Take that back, I guess the Calabasas was also based on an existing pair, but whatever, just sharing some knowledge. According to sneakers and stuff, grey melange is one of the most iconic colors around. You could either wear it neutral or as a statement color. Now, I don't know what they're thinking, the color is grey, I don't think of that as iconic, but sneakers and stuff loves it so much that they decided to cover their latest Adidas Originals pack in it. The pack consists of two different colors of the Adidas Originals NMD R2 model, with an upper made of a stretch material with added details of nubuck, crisscross stitching, and a white mid. Both pairs will be dropping exclusive to sneakers and stuff on June 28th and will be available in store and online for $140 each. Shoes are getting weird. Well, maybe not so much the shoes themselves, but the inspirations behind the designs. Take the Stance New Balance Fuel Core Sonic, which is inspired by the pursuit of being the GOAT, the greatest of all time. They took GOAT literally, however, and the upper features a white and gray GOAT-inspired texture upper, as well as a fucking GOAT printed on the insole. Okay, hating aside, they're not that bad, but they are weird. The pack also includes a pair of Stance socks, and you can find them now on the New Balance and Stance websites for $150. On to Nike, and I know this is a shitty picture, so I apologize for that, but it's the info that counts on this one. If you're a fan of the Nike Special Field Air Force One High, then there's a couple more colorways you have to look forward to. I'm not sure what's been up with Nike and Jordan Brand lately with their tonal red and blue drops, but if you like that kind of thing, you could add these to the list, which are a Q1 2018 release. And next up, we have what I think is the first pair of Vapor Maxes that I'm not really a fan of. The Nike Lab Nike Air Vapor Max Cargo Khaki, and it looks like the shoe has moss growing on it. The pair comes constructed with a full fly knit upper in a midnight fog colorway with hits of cargo khaki and desert moss with gold detailing hitting the tongue. Now, what I do actually like about this pair, though, is that Vapor Max bubble, which gives an appearance of a blacked out bubble, but when hit by light, shows its true midnight fog color. This is going to be a Nike Lab drop, which will be available online and at select retailers on June 20th and the retail price is the regular $190. Now that last pair that we looked at was for the men, and dropping alongside the cargo khaki, we have this pair for the ladies, the Nike Lab Nike Air Vapor Max T Berry. Now keep in mind, since these are both Nike Lab drops, they will release in limited quantities, and I'm pretty sure they're going to sell out. For this pair, Nike Lab chose to give the shoe a makeover in a college navy taupe grey and T Berry colorway, with T Berry hitting the Nike swoosh branding and Vapor Max bubble. These two will drop on June 20th with a retail price of $190. Let's move over to the Nike Air Composite 1 Eggplant because we finally have a release date for these. Now before we get to the release details, for any newcomers, this pair last released in 2010 and is set to return as part of the Silhouette's 20th anniversary celebration. The upper comes in black while a Varsity Purple hits the Foamposite shell, Nike and Penny branding and shoes accenting. Now for the release, these will drop on July 29th and the retail is set at the typical $230. The Air Max 95, the first Nike sportswear shoe to display visible Air Max cushioning on the forefoot. This pair was part of the natural progression that brought us to the Vapor Max with the giant fucking balloon air bubble on the outsole. For any ladies who are fans of the Air Max 95, we have the perfect summer shoe for you, the Air Max 95 White Ice. The pair comes dressed in nearly triple white, but actually sports a white, pure platinum and nice colorway. It's decent, I think the touch of pearlescent on the upper keeps it in the women's lane for me, but anyway, this pair should be dropping soon. There's no 
exact date yet, so stay tuned for that. But the retail set at $160. And last up for Nike, we have this beautiful Air Max 97. The shoe comes in a nearly all-white colorway with a flooded white upper featuring a synthetic python texture wrapping the upper with hits of sail visible on the air unit. Okay, so to remind everyone, this model, the 97, is my favorite out of all the Air Maxes, so if I don't get this shoe when it releases, it's going to be a problem. The problem for right now, though, is that we don't have an exact release date available, but the drop should be happening sometime this summer with a $160 retail price. Oh yeah, for for those who ask me on Instagram if this pair will have 3M, I guess this is your answer. Every summer in Paris, Jordan holds the K54 basketball tournament, and every year sneakerheads go crazy trying to get their hands on the exclusive drops. Now, I don't think anyone's going to go too nuts trying to get their hands on these, the Jordan Formula 23 Low K54, but they're dope. Today we got the official images of the model, which comes in a black, Italy blue, and university red colorway, with K54 detailing found on the insole, and GPS coordinates on the cage. The pair releases sometime in July for $120, and they will also be available in grade school sizing. If you watched last night's video, you know that just yesterday Jordan Brand revealed select models for their fall lineup, and one of those pairs revealed were these Air Jordan 2 Decon Thunder Blue. The whole idea behind the Decon program is to take a basketball performance shoe, strip it down to its essentials, and turn it into a lighter lifestyle model. By removing the already premium leather for the two and replacing it with suede in a Thunder Blue, Jordan Brand did just what they set out to do. Now, I'm not a fan, they're better than the Decon ones though, and this pair drops on July 15th for a $160. In addition to the triple black and thunder blue pairs, Jordan Brand will also be releasing the Air Jordan 2 Decon in sale. This pair, like the others, comes built in a fully suede upper in a sail colorway, sitting on a sail colored outsole, and to add some contrast, the Jordan branding on the tongue and heel get hit with bio beige. Again, I'm not a fan, easy pass for me, but for anyone else who's wanting these, they too drop on July 15th for $160. Next for Jordan, we have the official images and the inspiration behind the Air Jordan Converse pack. When Jordan signed his first NBA contract, it came with a clause that allowed him to participate in off-season competitive pickup games. The clause specifically allowed for Jordan's love of the game, allowing him to play wherever, whenever, regardless of potential liability. This is unique for athletes. Most franchises in all sports do not want their players to play in a meaningless game and injure themselves. The athlete is an asset and prohibits Prohibiting an NFL player to play in an off-season game is meant to protect that asset. A couple of the most memorable examples of Jordan utilizing this clause are the UNC alumni games in 86 and 87. In both games, Jordan wore the Air Jordan 2. In 86, he unknowingly debuted his Chicago home PE, and in 87, he wore the Air Jordan 2 in a low with Carolina blue detailing. The Air Jordan 2 included in this pack takes the high silhouette from 86, adds the Carolina blue detailing, and stamps the date from the 87 game on the heel. The converse in the pack comes from Jordan's refusal to skip the 1984 Olympics. He had just signed his first NBA contract, so choosing to attend the games was unique, controversial, and probably in his best interest to skip them, but he chose to attend anyway and help lead Team USA to a gold medal. Of course, during those games, he wore the Converse fast break, and that's the second pair included in the pack. While at UNC, Jordan wore Converse, and to honor his performance while playing for the Tar Heels, the Converse gets treated with Carolina blue detailing. Now, for anyone interested in adding these to the collection, June 28th is the date, and $300 is the price. We have some fuckery to talk about, but first we have the Air Jordan 3 Black Cat. 2018 marks the Air Jordan 3's 30th anniversary, but 2017 marks the 10th anniversary for the Air Jordan 3 Black Cat, which originally dropped back in the summer of 2007. So to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the colorway, Jordan Brand will be releasing the Air Jordan 3 in a triple black colorway later this December. What's unknown at this time is if the Black Cat will be the Black Cat that we know from 2007, or if Jordan Brand will tweak the colorway. So far, those details aren't confirmed, so stay tuned. Retail price for these will be $190. And last up for today, we have some fuckery to talk about, and this is more for those of you who are on Instagram. This douche bucket, captain shithead, fuckface, shit breath, cock and balls set up an account with the name Pino E777. Normally, I wouldn't care. It's kind of flattering to be copied, but when I looked into this account, I noticed he was not only reposting my pictures, but he snuck in a few of his own trying to sell fakes, and that's the fuckboy behavior that I don't like. I received a ton of message asking if this was my account and no, I only have one. I do not have any plans to open another. I also do not sell shoes. If you see any other Pinot E accounts, it's not me and do not give them your money. 
The story doesn't end there though, and this is why I love the squad. This morning when I woke up, I was treated to about 20 DMs, and here's about 5 of them. The DMs all came from the squad who decided to report chin nuts, and that's right, you can't fuck with the squad, cause we got this scammer shut down. I appreciate all of you who slapped this bitch ass and shut him down, we are squad. And that does it for today's video everyone. If you enjoyed it, and I hope you did, hit that like button. If you're new around here, subscribe, join the squad. If you have something to say, leave it in the comments below. Hand them out.